Hey there, North Point family. I'm so excited that you've joined us for session five in our series through the book of Colossians. Today we're looking at Colossians 2, verses 16 to 23. Now I want to encourage you this week uh, to read this passage for yourself, and I want you to highlight one piece or part or verse that means something to you, that the Holy Spirit is just speaking to you about, and dive into that. It just helps bring this all together um, practically for each of us. So let's dive into what the scripture says, and I want to read uh, this, these, these passages, these verses together here today. So let's go. So don't let anyone condemn you for what you eat or drink or for not celebrating certain holy days or new moon ceremonies or Sabbaths. For these rules are only shadows of the reality yet to come, and Christ himself is that reality. Don't let anyone condemn you by insisting on pious self-denial or the worship of angels, saying they have had visions about these things. Their sinful minds have made them proud, and they are not connected to Christ, they, the head of the body. For he holds the whole body together with its joints and ligaments, and it grows as God nourishes it. You have died with Christ, and he has set you free from the spiritual powers of this world. So why do you keep on following the rules of the world, such as don't handle, don't taste, don't touch? Such rules are mere human teachings about things that deteriorate as we use them. These rules may seem wise because they require strong devotion, pious self-denial, and severe bodily discipline, but they provide no help in conquering a person's evil desires. Now, I don't know about you, but growing up, I was, I was, I was a rule follower. Uh, I didn't really break a lot of the rules until I got to high school, and that's a different story for another time. But where, I, I wanted to ask this question, what about you? Were you a rule follower or a rule breaker growing up? Now see, I was friends with a lot of the rule breakers because I wanted to see how, how far they could push the boundaries and if they could loosen up the rules that I was following. I, I, loved, I loved hanging out with the rule breakers. But, alas, I was a, I was a rule follower. But I did enjoy watching the other people push the boundaries. And this passage, Paul continues to come at the false teachings that the Colossians face and were being told that they needed to follow. The first verse in this section starts with therefore, which signaled the need to look back at the previous verses and the previous statements that Paul had already talked about when it came to knowing the supremacy of Jesus in our lives and over all things. The main passage of Colossians is Jesus is supreme over all things. He's defeated the grave and every spiritual authority when he died on the cross and rose from the dead. He's our firm foundation, the one we should base our whole lives on. And when Paul brings up, and what Paul brings up in verse 16 and 17 is the religious rituals that were being practiced. And he's saying to the Colossians here that they're not significant, and he's just simply telling them to not allow that allow anyone to come against the necessities of spending time with Jesus. Don't let anyone tell you that there's other things that you need to be concerning your time with. Because if you're not spending time with Jesus, then you've missed it. See, God's salvation plan always involved Jesus coming to this earth and dying on a cross for us. We can look at the prophecies that were made through the Old Testament and into, into the New Testament. And especially as, as Jesus fulfilled each of those prophecies that were made. So the question comes up of why does Paul tell the Colossians... To not let anyone judge them uh, for their religious di their diets or religious celebrations. He's reminding them that their religious practices aren't the point of being a Christian. The point is to follow Jesus and allow him to reign supreme over, their, over our entire lives. Paul is making a reference to the false teachers mentioned in these verses who didn't rely on Jesus at all for understanding. Who just did it on their own strength and what they and based everything off of their own human insight. And that's not right. That's not what we are called to do. But see, the problem came when the Colossians actually began to believe what these false teachers were teaching them. Sometimes I think we can find ourselves in the same situation that the Colossians are finding themselves in here. We begin listening to the experts of the world and, and listening to what other people are telling us that we need to be doing or we need to spend, be spending our money and resources and time doing. But can I drop some truth here this morning or whenever you're watching this? If we aren't more concerned with spending time with Jesus through the word and in prayer and meditation on just spending time with him and listening to, for his voice, then we've missed it. If we're more concerned on doing what other people have said that is a necessity and what we need to be doing that takes away from just spending time with Jesus, then we've missed it. 
And that's what Paul is trying to get at here. It's why he's focused so much on, on the supremacy and sustaining power of Jesus and, and, and who he is. Because they've missed it. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I miss it. It doesn't matter who it comes from. We need to check it with scripture. It doesn't matter what, you, what YouTube pastor or preacher or whoever that we've been listening to. What they, it doesn't matter what they say if it doesn't also align with scripture. In verse 19, Paul makes it clear that Jesus supports and holds us together and that God brings us the growth that we need. God is the one who, through the Holy Spirit, who gives us the spiritual gifts to further us in our maturity with, in, our, in our relationship and journey with Jesus and, and in, on this faith walk that we're on. But also, he gives us the, the strength and wisdom and, and power that we need to be able to further the kingdom of God and tell others about Jesus here on earth. He's the source of growth and the source of unity that brings us together. God designed the church to rely on him entirely. It's by his grace alone that we are able to love each other and bring Jesus to the world that's around us. Spiritual growth happens in both the local and the global church. And I think, and it's, it's hard to see sometimes the, the, the growth that happens in the global church. But we can see it in small ways within the local church when we begin to focus on Jesus alone. It gives us a small look into what God is doing in the global church around us. The Colossians were being told by the false teachers that instead of doing all of this stuff that they had originally been taught, that they needed to be focused on doing all of this stuff over here as well. They need to be focused on, on the angels and, and all this kind of stuff. And, we, and, and I encourage you, dive more into that study because there's a lot in there that I'm not going to touch on today. It's pretty clear that the false teachers were telling the people that they need to do certain things in order to improve themselves, in order to earn their right into something more. But Paul points out that, that, the, that these rules that were selfish and harsh and lacking any real value to speak, people's spiritual walk were built and told to them, not on the authority of Jesus, but on the authority of man alone. And was taking them away from what they, where their focus needed to be. See, walking with Jesus looks different for each of us. There are some similarities that all of us do, and I've said it so many times, but we need to be in the Word, reading the Bible, so that we can get to know the heart of God, and we can get to becoming more like Him. We need to be spending time in prayer, we need to be doing all these things, but the question comes is, how does God speak to you best? Our walks look different, our journeys look different because we are all one body that come together and unite together in order to form the church of God. The core message of this, pa of this passage goes back to what we've been discussing throughout this series. It's the supremacy of Jesus. The supremacy of Jesus, the sustaining power of Jesus, the sovereignty of Jesus. Jesus has sealed our salvation through him. We don't have to work to, or to earn, it, to, to earn his love or his approval or anything like that. It's not based on what we do. It's based on a relationship with him and that we've accepted him as the son of God. That he's already paid the price for us. We submit to Jesus. That's why Paul urges the Colossian church to no longer follow the world's empty rules, but that we should pursue holiness. Paul's main criticism of the false teachers was that they weren't connected with the head. They weren't connected with Jesus, with God. They weren't connected. God is the, is the head of us. We are all different body parts that are connected to the head. They weren't connected to Jesus. Jesus secured our salvation through his death and resurrection on the cross. He defeated every spiritual authority and gives us new life when we choose to follow him. We are no longer bound to the authorities and rules that once imprisoned us. We've died to them with Jesus, but we sometimes find ourselves submitting to the rules of the world, just as Paul cautioned the Colossians against in verse 20 here. Instead of planting our foundation in the shaky things of the world, we need to remain connected to Jesus. In Acts 17, 28, it says, For in him we live, move, and exist. For in Jesus we live, we move, and we exist for him. That's truth for us, North Point family. Wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, whatever your relationship is, is at with God, I hope you understand and have understood the supremacy of Jesus in our lives. 
how connected we need to be with him and, and how he needs to be at the center of who we are so we continue to grow and mature in our faith and our journey with him. We don't need to concern ourselves with, with anything that would take us away and take our focus off of Jesus. We need to focus on him and becoming more like him. Our focus as a church is real hope, new life, and lasting purpose in Jesus. And bringing that real hope, new life, and lasting purpose to people who don't know him already. So this week I encourage you, I challenge you, and I'm challenging myself this week as well, to evaluate all of our weeks. How we're spending our time, what we're spending our time doing, what we're spending our, and, and concerning our time with. Because for all of us, I'm sure there's things that, are, that we're doing in our life that take us away from spending time with Jesus. I encourage you, look for ways to spend more time with Him. And I'm challenging myself with that this week as well. So Northwood family, I love you. I'm praying for you. I hope you have a great week and see you soon.